Hey everybody, uh, time for another copy trading update here from much more wintry feeling and looking Italy. Um, so over here in the portfolio, remember two of them, uh, J Nemesis and Miyoshi are currently sort of undergoing earnings season. You know what, don't know what earnings season is. It's a sort of a time of the year where there can be increased volatility. My last video was all about that, all right? How do we stay safe when there is increased volatility? Because it can be a big risk when we're new to trading and we make a lot of sort of silly mistakes, or I did and a lot of other people do, use too much leverage, lots of other things and cer certain market conditions can happen where we can risk our entire portfolio. So watch that last video to see what those risks are. Obviously, J Nemesis and Miyoshi are kind of really good at this. They've got experience. That's why I'm copying them. And even though some of these things that I'm talking about, some of the risks have sort of come true for them, they're all right. We'll get to it in a minute. In a minute. First, uh, my portfolio. In my stats, we can see that I've made 1.88%, which is really nice so far this month. 6.07% in October. And that sort of covers, or does it cover the month before? Remember in September, I lost 4.85%. A lot of the people I was copying kind of lost money. And I was saying in the last video that if we lose 4.85% in September, I'm gonna actually have to make back more than that in the next month to cover those losses. I can't just make back the same amount. So I lose 4.85. If I make back 4.85, 5%, I still haven't made back my losses. You can watch that last copy trading update. It should make sense though. So to check if I've actually made back these losses now, I can just go and have a look at the chart which is a really nice view. And here we can see how much money I had was up here, 11. This is if you'd copied me with $10,000 a year before. You can't copy me, I'm not a popular investor, whatever, but this that's what this simulates. So it simulates the amount of money you'd have if you copied me a year ago with $10,000. So here it would have been 11,952, around $12,000. Then we see the drawdown that happened in September. We can see the money dropping and dropping there on the right. And then it goes all the way down to 11,100. So from, from 12,000, it would have gone down to near 11,200. Now we can see it coming back up again over the last, um, since that drawdown, basically in September. And we're now above the highs that we were at just bought just before September, just before we lost that money, just before the drawdown, we're now above those previous highs. So we have made back those losses from September. The chart's a really nice way of seeing that. We can just check, this is how much I had before the loss, here's the loss, now I've got more than I had before the loss. I've made back those losses from September. So there we are, nice bit of stats there. Um, so far I'm in 14.65% profit for the year. Really nice kind of uh, good amount. All right, so in the portfolio, let's go over and see how Jay's doing. Let's go to his stats. So. For the month, he's up 2.82% in November. He was up 12.47% in October. So remember here, he had lost 6.33%. Did he make it back in October? Absolutely, he did. 12.47%, almost doubled the, the amount that he lost there. And 2.82% so far for, for November. So he's on 34.51% for the year. A really healthy gain. If we look at his chart again, we can see that here's before the drawdown in September. We can see it drawing down. And now look, he's way Way above it. He's at his all-time highs again. We can click out and we can look for sort of the last two years. We can see that over the last two years it's just gone up. It reached a high there which was in on the 24th of February of this year and then it's been jagged for sort of this year. We see the drawdown there in September and now he's at his all-time highs again. He's reaching his all-time high, time highs. Really well well done there to Jay. Um, so he's made them back. Let's go and have a look at his um, uh, risk scores. His risk scores still the last three months are the lowest risk scores of the year. So we have September, October, and November, all on an average risk of four. It went up to max five, but there we are, it's the same. He hasn't uh, increased past his max yearly drawdown. It's still at 12.54%. So he's doing really well. He hasn't increased his, his risk there. So here we see his copiers at 26,807. And we can see Jay's copiers sort of slowly drawing down here. Now he was um, stopped. He was actually blocked from having new copiers by eToro. As a lot of you know, a lot of people asking when he's gonna be able to be copied again. And the reason he was, uh, one of the biggest reasons that he was blocked from having new copiers is because his assets under management, the amount of money copying him got so big that when he went to made, make a trade, all that money would copy the same trade. And it was causing real problems in the markets he wanted to trade in. It, it actually causes problems that, is there enough money? Is there a big enough market to actually fulfill the trade you're trying to make? Because you're trying to trade with so much money when you make an average trade. I made a video about it up here. It's quite a problem to have. It's not a problem you can have unless you've got a lot, lot of money uh, sort of 
under uh, under your management. So have a look at that. But he's not got any people. He's not not getting more copies at the moment. And when people are copying you, it's normal that some people will leave and some new people will copy. Some people will need money, won't they? They'll want to buy a new house or buy someone a gift or just get out of trading or move abroad or whatever. So they're going to sort of stop copying. It's normal that a certain amount of people will stop copying. But since new ones aren't following him, we see this very slow um, drawdown, 0.83% in the last seven days, just of people stopping for whatever reason and not new ones. Now it's getting close to just before the big spike here. So I, I don't know, I, I haven't heard anything, I don't know anything, but you know, maybe at some point they'll let new people copy Jay. I don't know when or if that's true, don't ask me, I don't know. But there we are, still a very healthy amount of copies, 5 million plus much more than 5 million copy assets under management. An interesting thing about Jay, if we look at uh, what he's trading here, we see Bitcoin and Ethereum. We see Peloton, but we see Bitcoin and Ethereum as uh, two of his two most frequently traded items. Now, if we go to Jay's portfolio here, um, remember, if we go to the, let's go to here, into his risk thing, crypto, 11, 10.59% of his trades are crypto. Now, Jay's sort of seemed to have struck this really nice balance over the years, uh, and especially now, where he's sort of taking advantage of these big moves in crypto without being overexposed to them and sort of controlling his risk. If we look at the risk just here, uh, we can see that his number one, 9.52 in CRSR, then F, then Peloton, AMD, Solar Edge, these are all companies, equities, as far as I know, Plug, 4.84%, ENPH, 4.37%, and ETH, that's the first cryptocurrency, 4.31% of his risk is actually on Ethereum. That's the biggest sort of risk he's taking on any crypto. And then we go all the way down the line here, and there's still all of them. Look, they're all equities right there. There's Bitcoin is the next one at 2.32%. Now, if we go to his um, history over here, this shows sort of his previous, his closed trades. Let's go down a bit because at the moment, these are all Peloton. He's closing a lot of Peloton trades after the sort of big uh, market troubles. So here we see Bitcoin, Bitcoin, 28.96%, 28.98%. There's uh, uh, Polkadot, Solana, I believe, Linkchain, Atom, Matic, BTC. And look at the healthy sort of profits he's getting on these. Peloton equity down there. Um, but there he's trading a lot of uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin again. Look how profitable. These are all sort of uh, crypto trades. Look at the profitability on the crypto trades. So he's making a lot of profit and controlling his risk. So I'm really pleased actually with that. It's lovely to have someone capitalizing on the crypto gains whilst not overdoing it, you know. So 34.51% for the year. Uh, there's Jay. Really well done as always. Now in his feed, he did have that problem with uh, Peloton. Watch the last video to find out what happened with Peloton, what the risk is and how we can avoid it. Jay obviously calling it the elephant in my portfolio. He did actually avoid it and as he's pointed out here even if with the peloton thing even if peloton opens this low tomorrow impact on my portfolio would be around 1.9 percent loss we would still be green now we did see that he is still green for the month which is incredible given what happened that risk was huge watch and how well he was prepared for it or positioned for it and even with the s and we're even with the s p 500 for november but losing versus the nasdaq 100 so even with that thing with peloton i mean that's really why i copy these guys you know i don't copy these guys for the good times if i knew what was going to happen and everything was going to be good i'd just put trades open on bitcoin ethereum or amazon with a lot of leverage the most volatile things and i'd leave it really i copy them in case things go wrong you know, can they handle risk better than I can? I try, I hope that they'll also take advantage of market conditions and make me money. But it's really, will they survive through the bad times? And in earnings week, during earnings season, uh, stocks and equities can be very, very volatile. And if things go against you, as they did with Peloton and Jay's portfolio, it's lovely to see that they can handle it. I can leave it. I don't have to panic. I don't have to go in like I did in the beginning. And I've heard people saying and start sort of manually closing it. Let's find Peloton here and let's sort of start manually closing trades. No, I don't do that anymore. I did try in the beginning and it led to all sorts of problems where I'd close something and then it would turn around. They'd hold it open for the next six months and make loads of profit or I'd close them all they'd keep them open for a long time and now my profit stats and their profit stats are different they're unlinked it caused so many problems and the way I see it now if I'm going to copy these guys which I do now I'm going to copy them kind of through thick and thin I'm going to trust them to when there is a problem in the market and when market conditions are difficult or something goes wrong, I have to trust them. I don't have to, it's not investment advice, but me, I wanna trust them to handle that and I don't wanna have to micromanage them. So I'm really glad that they can, uh, to see them doing well when situations are adverse, you know. So on to slow and steady, uh, next guy. Uh, he's doing actually really well. If I look at his stats, uh, 
2.93% loss in September. Did he make it back? 2.82% in October. So he won't have made that September loss back just here, but 2.19% in, in November. Again, we can go to the chart and hold on a minute because I changed it. I'm going to click to uh, one year ago. So there is the drawdown September. We see the drawdown there and now here's the money going back up and it's above the high which just before the loss in September. So he has made those losses back. He's back in profit, doing really well there. Uh, if I go to click his uh, stats, 9.18% uh, for the year so far. His uh, risk scores are still incredibly low, minus 4.4% max drawdown. Still hasn't breached that yearly. 3019 copiers. Uh, plus 25 copies in the last seven days, really not much. Average trace, he's still trading the same stuff. Let's go over to his feed and see what he's saying. So um, he's rebalanced his portfolio. So every so often, uh, slow and steady rebalances the portfolio. He keeps a very conservative sort of low risk, low return, but returns portfolio. Um, and over here, He's, let's see what he's saying because he did actually change it. Here we are. Our November portfolio allocation has tilted towards a more aggressive setup with roughly 70% of funds allocated to equities. I intend to maintain this setup throughout November and then slowly but surely return to a more conservative one, 60-40, as we approach the end of the year. Now, 60-40, what does that mean? I believe that means 60% of, uh, of his portfolio is portfolio is exposed to equities, to the price of companies and that, those fluctuations. And I think 40% is more in treasuries or bonds. Let's have a look at what he's doing. So uh, let's have a look at TIP. TIP, what is that? Is uh, show more. iShares TIP's bond ETF is an exchange traded fund. Uh, it seeks to track the investment results of the Bloomberg Barclays US Treasury Inflation Protected Securities Index. Uh, it's this index is composed of inflation protected US Treasury bonds. So bonds are traditionally seen as a very safe sort of play, a very conservative play, not too volatile. They won't make you big rewards, but they'll make you sort of steady rewards over time. And hopefully you won't have to worry about the bottom falling out, out of the market and you lo losing uh, a lot of money. That's always the trade off will say, all right, you're going to give me something very safe, which is unlikely to completely fail. Therefore, I'll give you my money and I won't expect the world. I won't expect Tesla or Amazon or Google type returns in terms of the volatility of your price. I want some rewards. I realize they'll be lower, but in return, good, I'm not going to lose my money. So it's for the more cautious investor. So if we look at what he's investing in, slow and steady is normally investing a lot of his money into bonds, 60% into equities and 40% into bonds. Right now, he's gone 70% into equities, which is, uh, you know, it's risky for him, you know. So the portfolio is characterized by growth technology equities represented by e these two ETFs. He always trades ETFs and ETFs are very clever, exchange traded funds. The ETF designers sort of design the ETF to give a, a, an investor exposure to different parts of the market. It could be mid cap stocks or large cap stocks, very big companies or emerging market stocks, stocks from like emerging markets around the world or uh, different types of industries or whatever. ETFs are very clever and very precisely designed. The ones he's chosen give him, um, give him exposure to growth and technology equities. Now, growth equities are, for instance, Tesla or uh, tech stocks, you know, Amazon or Netflix, Google, the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google. They're known as high beta stocks, right? So people invest in them really because they expect the price to go up. They want to buy it here. The price will go up very volatile, more volatile, fast moving prices, more volatile than other sort of equities. They expect the price to go up. They want to buy it here, sell it here and make the money off the price movement. That's growth equities. Another type of equities is value equities, value investing, where people will take stocks which are more sort of the stable stocks, you know, Nestle or Keller or whatever, Coca-Cola. So they're seen as much, again, more conservative stocks. They're not so volatile in price. They'll go up in price over time, but not as quickly, not as volatile. And people sort of buy them and hold them for the same reasons. They don't want that risk of something which could go really down very quickly. They want something more stable, more sort of solid, which will give them long term growth. They can stay in that, hold that equity for many years. And over those years, it might give them lots of dividends as well. These stocks, the, the equities, the value stocks, 
usually give out good dividends as an incentive. They know that people aren't going to try and profit off the price increase so quickly. So instead, people hold them for a long time. And for holding our stock, we're going to give you um, dividends. So it's two sort of different approaches to investing. He's at the moment investing in growth stocks. So 70% in growth stocks, which is volatile stocks, which is quite risky for him. And the other part, um, 30%, is staying in his uh, sort of more conservative approach. And he's going to shift back to his more conservative approach after November. That's his plan at the moment. He seems to be doing well. Our eToro risk score maintains a solid three and our max drawdown stats remain intact. His max drawdown hasn't increased as we saw here. It's still 4.40%. His risk scores are still really stable. Um, so what he's talking about is that September drawdown. The September drawdown, there we are, was within historical ranges. It did not breach the max drawdown stats and underlines the consistent volatility of the portfolio. That's what he's going for. That's his name, slow and steady. And that's what he wants his portfolio to uh, um, sort of uh, show. And that's who he's targeting at. So over to Miyoshi, something interesting about Miyoshi. If we look at his stats, um, up 2.59% in October big loss there 5.47 in september only 2.59 in october he won't have made that back and down 0.93 percent in november if we look at his chart over here uh, let's raise it and zoom in a bit we can see just before the september loss he was up here there's the drawdown of september now he hasn't made it back he's struggling a bit he's back up to these sorts of highs but he hasn't made back that loss yet but obviously it's miyoshi let's wait i trust him been with him for ages um over on his feed one thing um about that why well, i won't say much more about miyoshi he hasn't been communicating much and someone did actually ask him a question and his answer was quite telling here we are six days ago hello not so many news from you lately uh, someone's like saying just wait for his next update but here's miyoshi five days ago yes my usual update is delayed likely till after the earnings season is over so miyoshi is another one who's really exposed to equities he's big exposed to equities in his portfolio so like all equities traders at the moment he's going to be waiting to see what happens with earnings with the earnings reports with the equities he's trading time of incredible volatility he'll be preparing for those earnings calls and reacting to the news that comes after they come out so that's what he's going to be doing at the moment uh, so we'll wait to see what he says after that he's down 0.93 percent i don't know how it's been going so far his risk scores are still average four max four still within his max yearly drawdown it hasn't changed and his copies are fairly stable down 3.13 percent in the last seven days actually we'll see how it goes with miyoshi we'll see a sort of breakdown of what's been happening during earnings report i guess in a week or so you know with him but he's he's doing well hasn't made those um, losses back but i trust him baltic seal baltic seal's been doing really well as well actually um 5.29% in October, 4.7% loss in September, 5.29% in October, 3.24% in November. He's at 10.85% for, uh, for the year, which is great. Um, over here, we can see that there he is pre-September losses. There's the drawdown in September, and he's really up beyond that now. He's really had a really good bump here. If I, see how this goes, actually. It goes down, then there's this sort of big bump, this big pump here. If I look, I go back and I look at Slow and Steady's chart, it actually looks really similar. Um, look, you see this sort of big, really very similar hook going on at the moment. I was trying to find out what have they both done to do that, and I couldn't really see what it was, which has given them both this very similar looking pump in the last um, the last little while. Uh, but there we are. I'll go back. Oh, way, the way it displays these eToro sometimes is so annoying. But there we are, back in profitability. His stats doing fantastically. Low battery warning. 10.85% so far for, for, the, um, for the year, which is great. Still really low risk scores. Average three, max risk three. So it's the same again, if I look back as uh, slow and steady. These two are my conservative approach kind of, kind of dudes here. Average three, max three, minus 4.40. And Baltic Seal is on, just to compare my low risk, battle of the low riskers is average three, max three, minus 5.95, so slightly higher than low, slow and steady, but really both of them doing very well. Again, look at them, both of them ETF guys, 1.41 trades per week, average 4.5 months holding times. So these guys are holding on to them still for a long time, haven't changed their style. So yeah, happy with Baltic Seal. Some people asked about this, the um, uh, the red stars and what all these mean. I did, I, I did make a, a video series about the Popular Investor Program. I have to change it because it's sort of, it was a version of the Popular Investor Program when the stars were different but it's exactly the same concept um, all you do if you want to find out what those stars are just go here where does it say popular investors popular investor program there it is it's one of the main things 
and you can go down and look cadet champion elite elite pro it shows the tiers it shows what requirements are there for you to get onto it so those those stars are there to represent the levels of the popular investor program the more assets under management you have the more copiers you have the sort of better you do within the program you can go up these different levels until eventually you're elite pro and as you raise through the levels as a popular investor you get more rewards monetary and otherwise from uh, eToro remember we don't pay the people we're, we're copying I don't pay anyone in my portfolio to copy them to copy them it's absolutely free they get paid by eToro the more people who are copying them the better they do on the program the more people they can attract to invest with them the higher they they go up the the, the ladders in the popular investor program and the more they can potentially earn they're all doing really well so these two it goes um at the moment it goes i think it goes blue red green black so these two are on the second level champion he's an elite popular investor on the green star and elite pro for jay nemesis there we are doing well i thought miyoshi was higher actually but there we go so anyhow, that's it. I'll leave it. I still haven't find out, uh, found out why you're not getting the top, uh, Toro Popular Investors fact sheet. Remember I made that video and I was talking about I get this really quite useful fact sheet sent to me once a month um, showing sort of statistics for all the people I copy. And you guys all said you're not getting it. Now I talked to eToro and I said, why am I getting this and other people aren't? They gave me a lot of reasons which one by one turned out not to be correct. And I kept saying, no, that's not true because of this or because the viewers are saying this and... And anyhow, eventually they just said, I get it and other people aren't getting it. And it's it's a sort of a test. And that feature should be rolled out to other people shortly. And it's great that I enjoy it. That's where they've left it. It doesn't seem a very satisfying answer. Don't know what else to say about that one. Sorry, I can't have more to... I did spend quite a long time emailing them. So uh, apart from that, everything's going well with the portfolio. I'm uh, really enjoying it. Loving this thing at the end. So over one month, it's slowly going up. Over three months, I'm slowly going up. Over six months, it's slowly going up. 12 months, my profit is slowly going up. Year to date, it's slowly going up. And this is sort of the portfolio really I wanted to build. I wanted to build something which didn't sort of wasn't massive, sparky, volatile terrifying nerves on edge type stuff just slow consistent steady growth and it's happened thanks to the people in my portfolio thanks to you jay slow and steady miyoshi baltic seal yuri victor patrick and jay sorry i shall use your real names thanks all of you um really great it is a sort of basically a slow and steady growth of my portfolio thanks all you guys and thanks for watching please like and subscribe it's getting dark i think it's about to start raining so i'll leave you again hope you're all well and see you soon bye